uh, section or chapter four, um, chapter four, manipulating files and directories. At this point, we are ready for some real work. This chapter will introduce the following commands. CP, copy files and directories. MV, move rename files and directories. MKDIR, cre create directories. RM, remove files and directories. LN, create hard and symbolic links. These five commands are among the most frequently used Linux commands. They're used for manipulating both files and directories. Now, to be frank, some of the tasks performed by these commands are more easily done with a graphical file manager. With a file manager, we can drag and drop a file from one directory to another, cut and paste files, delete files, and so on. So why use these old command line programs? The answer is power and flexibility. While it is easy to perform simple file manipulations with a graphical file manager, complicated tasks can be easier with the command line programs. For example, how can we copy all the HTML files from one directory to another, but only copy files do, that do not exist in the destination directory or are newer than the versions in the destination directory? It's pretty hard with a file manager, but pretty easy with the command line. cp space dash u space star dot html space destination. cp is copy files and directories. <clears throat> oh, the star... Um, will bring you through all the .html files copied to whatever this destination is. Wildcards. Before we begin using our commands, we need to talk about a shell feature that makes these commands so powerful. Since the shell uses file names so much, it provides special characters to help us rapidly specify groups of file names. These special characters are called wildcards. Using wildcards, which is also known as globbing, allows us to select file names based on patterns and characters. Table 4-1 lists the wildcards and what they select. So the star up here is this star, which matches any characters. A question mark matches any single character. Bracket characters, close bracket, matches any character that is a member of the set characters. Bracket exclamation point characters, close bracket, matches any character that is not a member of the set characters. So that exclamation point is not. Um, double bracket, so bracket, bracket, colon, class, colon, close bracket, close bracket. Matches any character that is a member of the specified class. Table 4-2 lists the most commonly used character classes. Okay, so if you have bracket, colon, A-L-N-U-M, colon, close bracket, that matches any alphanumeric character. If you have bracket, colon, A-L-P-H-A, colon, close bracket, that matches any alphabetic character. If there's bracket, colon, D-I-G-I-T, colon, close bracket, that matches any numeral. Bracket colon L-O-W-E-R 
colon, close bracket, matches any lowercase letter. Bracket, colon, U-P-P-E-R, colon, close bracket, matches any uppercase letter. Using wildcards makes it possible to construct sophisticated selection criteria for file names. Table 4-3 provides some examples of patterns and what they match. So wildcard examples. Star, all files, matches all files. G uh, asterisk or star, any file beginning with G. B asterisk dot txt or b star dot txt any file beginning with b followed by any characters and ending with dot txt data question mark question mark question mark any file beginning with data followed by exactly three characters Bracket, ABC, close bracket, asterisk. Any file beginning with either an A, a B, or a C. Backup dot bracket 0-9, close bracket, bracket 0-9, close bracket, bracket 0-9, close bracket. Any file beginning with backup followed by exactly three numerals. My guess is if you change the numerals here, then the numerals in these spots might be limited to those numerals. I don't know. You'd have to check on that. Bracket, bracket, colon, upper, colon, close bracket, close bracket, asterisk. Any file beginning with an uppercase letter. Bracket, exclamation point, bracket, colon, digit, colon, close bracket, close bracket, bracket, asterisk. Any file not beginning with a numeral. Notice again the exclamation point is giving you not. All right, asterisk, bracket, bracket, colon, lower, colon, close bracket, one, two, three, close bracket. Any file ending with a lowercase letter or the numerals one, two, or three. Any file ending with a lowercase letter or the numerals one, two, or three. Wildcards can be used with any command that accepts file names as arguments, but we'll talk more about that in Chapter 7, Seeing the World as the Shell Sees It. Character Ranges If you are coming from another Unix-like environment or have been reading some other books on this subject, you may have encountered the bracket A to Z close bracket and bracket lowercase a to lowercase z close bracket character range notations. These are traditional Unix notations and worked in older versions of Linux as well. They can still work, but you have to be careful with them because they will not produce the expected results unless properly configured. For now, you should avoid using them and use character classes instead. Wildcards work in the GUI too, the GUI, Graphical User Interface. Wildcards are especially valuable not only because they are used so frequently on the command line, but because they are also supported by some graphical file managers. In Nautilus, the file manager for GNOME, you know, I don't know if that's still the file manager for GNOME. I should know, but I think they changed it. All right, in Nautilus, at least at one time the file manager for GNOME, you can select files using the Edit Select Pattern menu item. 
Just enter a file selection pattern with wildcards and the files in the currently viewed directory will be highlighted for selection. In some versions of Dolphin and Conqueror, uh, Conqueror with K, the file managers for KDE, you can enter wildcards directly on the location bar. For example, if you want to see all the files starting with the lowercase u in the forward slash usr forward slash bin directory, the user bin directory, enter, uh, quote, forward slash usr forward slash bin forward slash u asterisk, close quote, in the location bar, and it will display the re result. So all files starting with the lowercase u in a particular directory, you use the U with an asterisk to do that. Many ideas originally found in the command line interface make their way into the graphical interface too. It is one of the many things that make the Linux desktop so powerful. MKDIR, create directories. The mkdir command is used to create directories. It works like this. mkdir directory dot dot dot. A note on notation. When three periods follow an argument in the description of a command as above, it means that the argument can be repeated. Thus the following command. mkdir space dir one would create a single directory named dir1 while the following mkdir space dir1 space dir2 space dir3 would create three directories named dir1 dir2 and dir3 cp copy files and directories the cp command copies files or directories. It can be used two different ways. The following, cp space item 1 space item 2 copies the single file or directory item 1 to the file or directory item 2 and the following, cp item dot 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 space directory copies multiple items, either files or directories, into a directory. Useful options and examples. Table 4-4 lists some of the commonly used options for CP. CP options. Option dash A. The long option is dash dash archive. The meaning Copy the files and directories and all of their attributes, including ownerships and permissions. Normally, copies take on the default attributes of the user performing the copy. We'll take a look at file permissions in Chapter 9, Permissions. Dash I, dash dash interactive. Before overriding an existing file, Prompt the user for confirmation. If this option is not specified, CP will silently, meaning there will be no warning, overwrite files. Dash R. Dash dash recursive. Recursively copy directions, directories, and their contents. This option or the dash A option, is required when copying directories. Dash U, or the long way, long option, is dash dash update. When copying files from one directory to another, only copy files that either don't exist or are newer than the existing corresponding files in the destination directory. 
This is useful when copying large numbers of files as it skips files that don't need to be copied. Dash V, dash dash verbose. Display informative messages as the copy is performed. CP examples. Okay, so that's table four, five. CP, file one, file two. That, uh, the results, is to copy file one to file two. If file two exists, it is overwritten with the contents of file one. If file two, two does not exist, it is created. So be careful because you don't want to overwrite something you don't want to overwrite. CP dash I file one file two. Same as previous command, except that if file two exists, the user is prompted before it is overwritten. Dash I is interactive, right? CP file one, file two, dir one. Copy file one and file two into directory dir one. The directory dir one must already exist. CP dir one forward slash star dir two. Using a wildcard, copy all the files in directory 1 into directory 2. The directory 2, dir2, um, sorry, must already exist. cp r dir1, dir2. So remember, dash r is recursive. So cp-r, dir1, dir2, copy the contents of directory, dir1, to directory, dir2. If directory, dir2, does not exist, it is created, and after the copy, will contain the same contents as directory, dir1. If directory, dir2, does exist, then directory, dir1, and its contents will be copied into DIR2. MV, move and rename files. The MV command performs both file moving and file renaming. Depending on how it is used, in either case, the original file name no longer exists after the operation. MV is used in much the same way as CP as shown here. MV, item 1, item 2. To move or rename the file or directory, item 1 to item 2, or MV, item, dot, 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 space, directory. To move one or more items from one directory to another. Useful options and examples. MV shares many of the same options as CP as described in Table 4-6. That's MV options. Option dash I, <clears throat> dash dash interactive, meaning before overriding an existing file, prompt the user for confirmation. If this option is not specified, MV will silently overwrite files. So the long option is dash dash interactive. All right, dash U, the long option dash dash update. When moving files from one directory to another, only move files that either don't exist or are newer than the existing corresponding files in the destination directory. Dash V, dash dash verbose. Display informative messages as the move is performed. So notice you have I for interactive, U for update, and V for, for verbose. If you go up here into the copy command, again you have I for interactive, V is for verbose, and U is update. 
All right, table 4-7 provides some examples of MV usage. All right, MV, file 1, file 2. The results are to move file 1 to file 2. If file 2 exists, it is overwritten with the contents of file 1. If file 2 does not exist, it is created. In either case, file 1 ceases to exist. MV dash I file one file two. Same as the previous command, except that if file two exists, the user is prompted before it is overwritten. MV file one file two dir one. Move file one and file two into directory one. The directory, um, I'm sorry, move file one and file two into dir one. The directory dir1 must already exist. mv dir1 dir2. If dir2 does not exist, create directory dir2 and move the contents of directory dir1 into dir2 and delete directory dir1. If directory dir2 does exist, move directory dir1 and its contents into directory dir2. rm, remove files and directories. The rm command is used to remove, delete files and directories as shown here. rm item dot 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 where item is one or more files or directories. Useful options and examples. Table 4-8 describes some of the common options for RM. And not surprising, we have dash I for dash dash interactive. So before deleting an existing file, it prompts the user for confirmation. If this option's not specified, RM will silently de delete files. Dash R, it's dash dash recursive. Recursively delete directories. This means that if a directory being deleted has subdirectories, delete them too. To delete a directory, this option must be specified. Dash F, the long options dash dash force. Ignore ex non-existent files and do not prompt. This overrides the dash dash interactive option. And dash V, that's the dash dash verbose, display informative messages as the deletion is performed. So you have IRFV here. Previously, you had IUV and previously, you had A-I-R-U-V. So you're getting repetitions between these different commands. So you can use them to help you remember what they do between uh, all the different options. All right, so RM file one will delete file one silently. RM dash I file one, same as the previous command, except that the user is prompted for confirmation before deletion is performed. rm-r file1 dir1. Delete file1 and dir1 and its contents. rm-rf file1 dir1. Same as the previous command, except that if either file1 or dir1 do not exist, rm will continue silently. Be careful with RM exclamation point. Unix-like operating systems, such as Linux, do not have an undelete command. Once you delete something with RM, it's gone. Linux assumes you're smart and you know what you're doing. Be particularly careful with wildcards. Consider this classic example. Let's say you want to delete just the HTML files in a directory. 
To do this, you type the following, rm star dot html. This is correct, but if you accidentally place a space between the asterisk and the dot html like so, rm space asterisk space dot html, the rm command will delete all the files in the directory and then complain that there is no file called dot html. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Here is a useful tip. Whenever you use wildcards with rm, besides carefully checking your typing, exclamation point, test the wildcard first with ls. This will let you see the files that will be deleted. So replace wherever you would write rm with that ls. And this will let you see the files that will be deleted. Then press the up arrow key to recall the command and replace ls with rm. So ln create links. The ln command is used to create either hard or symbolic links. It is used in one of two ways. The following creates a hard link. ln file link. The following creates a symbolic link. ln dash s item link. To create a symbolic link where item is either a file or a directory. When I read it, if I say a word and then say another word, there's a space between them. All right, hard links. Hard links are the original Unix way of creating links, compared to symbolic links, which are more modern. By default, every file has a single hard link that gives the file its name. When we create a hard link, we create an additional directory entry for a file. Hard links have two important limitations. One, a hard link cannot reference a file outside its own file system. This means a link cannot reference a file that is not on the same disk partition as the link itself. Two, a hard link may not reference a directory. A hard link is indistinguishable from the file itself. Unlike a symbolic link, when we list a directory containing a hard link, we will see no special indication of the link. When a hard link is deleted, the link is removed, but the contents of the file itself continue to exist. That is, its space is not deallocated until all links to the file are deleted. It is important to be aware of hard links because you might encounter them from time to time, but modern practice prefers symbolic links, which we will cover next. Symbolic links. Symbolic links were created to overcome the limitations of hard links. Symbolic links work by creating a special type of file that contains a text pointer to the reference file or directory. In this regard, they operate in much the same way as a Windows shortcut, though of course they predate the Windows feature by many years. A file pointed to by a symbolic link and the symbolic link itself are largely indistinguishable from one another. For example, if we write something to the symbolic link, the reference file is written to. However, when we delete a symbolic link, only the link is deleted, not the file itself. If the file is deleted before the symbolic link, the link will continue to exist, but will point to nothing. In this case, the link is said to be broken. In many implementations, the ls command will display broken links in a distinguishing color, such as red, to reveal their presence. The concept of links can seem confusing, but hang in there. We're going to try all this stuff, and it will, hopefully, become clear. Let's build a playground. Since we're going to do some real file manipulation, 
let's build a safe place to play with our file manipulation commands. First, we need a directory to work in. We'll create one in our home directory and call it Playground. Okay, creating directories. The mkdir command is used to create a directory. To create our Playground directory, we will first make sure we are in our home directory and we'll then create the new directory. So cd, then mkdir playground. To make our playground a little more interesting, let's create a couple of directories inside it called dir1 and dir2. To do this, we will change our current working direct directory to playground and execute another mkdir. So you do cd playground and then mkdir, dir1, dir2. Notice that the mkdir command will accept multiple arguments allowing us to create both directories with a single command. Copying files. Next, let's get some data into our playground. We'll do this by copying a file. Using the cp command, we'll copy the passwd file from the forward slash etc directory to the current working directory. So cp space forward slash etc forward slash passwd space dot. Notice how we use shorthand for the current working directory. The single trailing period. So now if we perform an ls, we will see our file. ls-l. Now, just for fun, let's repeat the copy using the dash v option, verbose, to see what it does. So cp dash v forward slash etc forward slash passwd space dot period. Um, when I say dot, I'm referring to the period. The cp command performed the copy again, but this time displayed a concise message indicating what operation it was performing. Notice that CP overwrote the first copy without any warning. Again, this is a case of CP assuming that we know what we're doing. To get a warning, we'll include the dash I interactive option. CP dash I, no, no, CP space dash I space forward slash etc forward slash passwd space period. Responding to the prompt by entering a Y will cause the file to be overwritten. Any other character, for example N, will cause CP to leave the file alone. Moving and renaming files. Now, the same pass passwd doesn't seem very playful, and this is a playground, so let's change it to something else. mv passwd fun. Let's pass the fun around a little by moving our rename file to each of the directories and back again. The following moves it first to the directory dir1. So, mv fun dir1. The following then moves it from dir1 to dir2. mv dir1 forward slash fun dir2. Finally, the following, so th that moves it from directory 1 to directory 2. Finally, the following brings it back to the current working directory mv dir2 forward slash 
F-U-N, space, period. Next, let's see the, so that brings back the current working directory. Brings it back to the current working directory, uh, fun. So we're moving fun around. Next, let's see the effect of MV on directories. First, we will move our data file into DIR1, again, like this, MV, fun, DIR1. So that moves our data file into DIR1. Then we move DIR1 into DIR2 and confirm it with LS. So MV, DIR1, DIR2. Then LS, dash L, DIR2. Then LS, dash L, DIR2 forward slash DIR1. Note that since DIR2 already existed, MV moved DIR1 into DIR2. If DIR2 had not existed, MV would have renamed DIR1 to DIR2. Lastly, let's put everything back. MV, DIR2 forward slash DIR1 space period. MV space DIR1 forward slash FUN space period. Creating hard links. Now we'll try some links. We'll first create some hard links to our data file like so. ln fun fun-hard ln fun dir1 forward slash fun-hard and ln fun dir2 forward slash fun-hard so now we have four instances of the file fun. Let's take a look at our playground directory. See, so he did ls-l, and he's got dir1, dir2, fun, and fun-hard. One thing we notice is that both the second fields in the listings for fun and fun-hard contain a four which is the number of hard links that now exist for the file. Remember that a file will always have at least one link because the file's name is created by a link. So how do we know that fun and fun-hard are, in fact, the same file? In this case, ls is not very helpful. While we can see that fun and fun-hard are both the same size, field 5. That's 1650. Our listing provides no way to be sure. To solve this problem, we're going to have to dig a little deeper. When thinking about hard links, it is helpful to imagine that files are made up of two parts. One, the data part containing the file's contents, and two, the name part that holds the file's name. When we create hard links, we are actually creating additional name parts that all refer to the same data part. The system assigns a chain of disk blocks to what is called an inode, which is then associated with the name part. Each hard link therefore refers to a specific inode containing the file's contents. The ls command has a way to reveal this information. It is invoked with the dash i option. So for example, ls space dash li. In this version of the listing, the first field is the inode number. And as we can see, both fun and fun dash hard share the same inode number, which confirms they are the same file. Uh, 1235358. Creating symbolic links. 
symbolic links were created to overcome the two disadvantages of hard links. One, hard links cannot span physical devices. Two, hard links cannot reference directories, only files. Symbolic links are a special type of file that contains a text pointer to the target file or directory. Creating symbolic links is similar to creating hard links. ln-s fun fun-sim ln dash s dot dot forward slash fun space dir1 forward slash fun dash sym ln space dash s space dot dot forward slash fun space dir2 forward slash fun dash sym the first example is pretty straightforward. We simply add the dash s option to create a symbolic link rather than a hard link. But what about the next two? Remember, when we create a symbolic link, we are creating a text description of where the target file is relative to the symbolic link. It's easier to see if we look at the ls output shown here. ls dash l dir1 the listing for fun dash sym in dir1 shows that it is a symbolic link by the leading l in the first field and that it points to dot dot forward slash fun, which is correct. Relative to the location of fun dash syn, fun fun is in the directory above it. Notice too that the length of the symbolic link file is six, the number of characters in the string dot dot forward slash fun rather than the length of the file to which it is pointing. L, uh, let's see. When creating symbolic links, we can either use absolute path names as shown here. ln dash s forward slash home forward slash me forward slash playground forward slash fun dir1 forward slash fun dash sym see when creating symbolic links we can either use absolute path path names as shown here or relative path names as we did in our earlier example in most cases Using relative path names is more desirable because it allows a directory tree containing symbolic links and their reference files to be renamed and are moved without breaking the links. In addition to regular files, symbolic links can also reference directories. ln dash s dir1 dir1 dash sym ls dash l removing files and directories as we covered earlier the rm command is used to delete files and directories we are going to use it to clean up our playground a little bit first let's delete one of our hard links rm fun dash hard ls dash l that worked as expected the file fun dash hard is gone and the link count shown for fun is reduced from four to three as indicated in the second field of the directory listing next we'll delete the file fun and just for enjoyment 
we'll include the dash I option to show what it does. R uh, RM dash I fun. Enter Y at the prompt and the file is deleted. But let's look at the output of LS now. Notice what happened to fun dash shim. Since it's a symbolic link pointing to a now non-existent file, the link is broken. So ls l. Most Linux distributions configure ls to display broken links. The presence of a broken link is not in and of itself dangerous, but it is rather messy. If we try to use a broken link, we will see this. Less space fun dash shim. Let's clean up a little. We'll delete the symbolic links here. rm fun dash shim dir1 dash shim ls ls space dash l. One thing to remember about symbolic links is that most file operations are carried out on the link's target, not the link itself. RM is an exception. When we delete a link, it is the link that is deleted, not the target. Finally, we will remove our playground. To do this, we will return to our home directory and use RM with the recursive option, dash R, to delete playground and all of its contents, including its subdirectories. CD RM R Playground. Creating sim links with the GUI. The file managers in both GNOME and KDE provide an easy and automatic method of creating symbolic links. With GNOME, holding the Control Shift keys while dragging a file will create a link rather than copying or moving the file. In KDE, a small menu appears whenever a file is dropped, offering a choice of copying, moving, or linking the file. Summing up, we've covered a lot of ground here and it will take a while for it all to fully sink in. Perform the playground exercise over and over until it makes sense. It is important to get a good understanding of basic file manipulation commands and wildcards. Feel free to expand on the playground exercise by adding more files and directories. Using wildcards to specify files for various operations. The concept of links is a little confusing at first, but take the time to learn how they work. They can be a real lifesaver. For further reading, you can find a discussion of symbolic links on Wikipedia under the uh, symbolic link word. So that's probably symbolic underscore link.